In this video, I'm going to show you how to change the color of watercolors in Photoshop. It's really easy to change the color of like a square in Photoshop because if it's this green color and say we want to change it to bright green, um, all we need to do is just make sure that that's rasterized and then we can use this pink bucket. Super easy or if it's before it's rasterized, you can even just change the fill over here. So very easy, but if we wanted to, for instance, change these flowers instead of yellow, we wanted to make them orange, for instance, it's a lot harder with watercolor where we have all these different colors intermingling together. So for instance, let's just try it and see what happens. Let's choose a nice orange color and my paint bucket tool and you're basically clicking just a bunch of stuff. And not only is it not changing the flowers completely at once, taking a lot of work, uh, but you can see like the actual watercolor look of that is just completely disappearing. It's becoming like a graphic, uh, very digital, computerized, pixelated kind of image. So instead of this, what we want to do is use an adjustment layer. And another benefit of this is that it's not going to actually affect this layer underneath us so we can always go back to the yellow flowers if we need to. So I'm going to add an adjustment layer just by going to the layers panel, new adjustment layer, and there's a lot of options here that you can use, but if I'm specifically trying to change the color of watercolor, I always use the hue and saturation layer. If we have a lot of layers and we want this to apply to all of them, for instance, a bunch of yellow flowers, we could just use it as um, an overarching layer that applies to everything below it. If we only want it to apply to the specific layer, then we can say use previous layer to create clipping mask. Uh, that's that little arrow here and it just means that this is all these changes are only going to apply to this layer. We only have one, so it'll work the same either way. And then up here, we have all of our little um, options for changing the hue, saturation, and lightness. And I like to use all of these in conjunction to get the right colors. So what this does is it changes everything kind of in a filter way. It's almost like putting a filter over something. So if you have one of these lighter colors of yellow, it's going to change that, say, negative 10. It's also going to change the darker colors, negative 10. So everything is going to change in relation to each other, and you're going to get a lot better results than you would with the paint bucket that's just trying to put the same color on everything. So for instance, if we just move this hue, we see we're going green, we're going orange, we're going red, we're doing a lot of things like this red is super pretty. What you'll notice is the stems are also changing colors. So if you do have your flower blooms alone without any stems, you could of course select them all, make them a new layer, only apply it to that layer. It's going to be a good bit of work, um, but you can absolutely do that. And that's something where sometimes I do have just the blooms as they are, but in this case I don't. So I'm going to instead just edit a specific color range. And to do that, I'll click this master dropdown and choose which colors I want. We're gonna use yellows in this case. Sometimes I find <laughs> that like your greens are more actually yellows and your dark blues are more cyans and magentas and things like that. So just play around and see how it works for you. What I typically like to do is once I select one to make sure I've got the right color range, I will just do something crazy and make sure it's going. So you actually see that there's a lot of yellow in the green of the stem. So you might, if you're doing a very big change, you might find better results if you um, do separate these into different layers. However, if I'm just changing this from yellow to orange, it's not going to be as big of a difference. So I will adjust the hue ever so slightly. I'm going to do negative 14 here. And now these yellow flowers are a nice shade of orange and they did it in a natural way because all of the yellow highlights in the greenery, for instance, change to orange as well. So we get that same change for the entire image and it makes it a lot more natural looking, which is really the power and benefit of watercolor in the first place. And what's great since we did this on an adjustment layer is that we can always turn it off and go back to the yellow if we want. And we can always adjust it if we want. Maybe that orange isn't exactly right. So we're gonna make everything more saturated, um, everything lighter, etc. And again, you can continue editing within those individual color ranges if you wanted. So we can make these orange pieces light, dark, super saturated, etc. I'm just gonna stick with that negative 14 hue 
for now because I think it looks really pretty. Now I also want to show you how this same exact hue and saturation layer is going to affect um, different pieces that all started out as yellow. So this one, as a reminder, started out as this kind of nice classic, almost uh, not quite golden, but just like very sunshine yellow. And now it looks like this nice kind of medium orange. This one looks a lot darker and that is because it kind of started as a darker, more golden yellow in the sunflower. So as you can see, we're not just putting this color exactly onto every piece. We are adjusting the work that's already there by that negative 14 in the yellows. So any type of yellow that's already there, we're adjusting by negative 14. So it's gonna affect all of your pieces a little bit differently, but it's a much more natural look overall. And then this is another example where we started out with a much brighter color of yellow, and so we get a much lighter orange. Again, just kind of scroll through those so you can see the difference. So I really like using adjustment layers, especially on watercolor, because they make such a natural change. And the you'll find like the inside of the flower is going to change in relation. So that can present a little bit of difficulty sometimes, uh, but for some of these subtle changes like yellow to orange, um, blue to green, blue to purple, etc., it's going to feel really, really natural. It's gonna be really easy. And if you wanna do something more complicated, then you could like separate the blooms from the stems, select a specific color range, um, do things like that. So one additional part of this feature is you can use this colorize option, and this is going to colorize the entire thing. Um, kind of into like a sepia or black and white. So you can then adjust um, the hue and saturation, but it's all going to be uh, one color. So I find this works really well if you're trying to do like a cool tool design, for instance, if you wanted all your flowers to still look like watercolor, ink sketches, that kind of thing, but you want them to all be the same color. Um, or if you have a bunch of blooms, this is a great way to do the kind of the same type of changes that we've already been talking about. So there's a lot of uses for this one as well. Let's see what happens. Ooh, that one's so ugly. <laughs> but there are a lot of good uses uh, for this colorized feature as well. Uh, but if you want to adjust just one part of the image, you can do that by just selecting that color range from the drop down. I use these hue and saturation adjustment layers a lot when creating invitation frames like this one. I wanted to make sure all the colors were in the same blue range, um, all the greenery was in the same green and blue range as well. So this is a great way to make a bunch of watercolors kind of match, change the colors of them, make them look different than they started, um, and use them in a unique and interesting way. I do have a full course on the frame building that I did to create this frame. If you wanna learn how to find these elements, pick them out, organize them, uh, build the frame and use them throughout your suite, uh, definitely check that out in the description of this video. It's also part of our stationary school membership where you get lessons like these every single month just for wedding invitation designers. So if you're interested in becoming a stationary designer, check that out in the link in the description. And if not, I hope you'll check out some of our other Adobe Creative Cloud videos and let me know what else you'd like to learn about using programs like Photoshop. Thanks everyone.